that's better. Ooh, it is whooping up a stinker outside. Power's out, got nothing else to do but make this intro video. I'm Mark Rudin, this is Nomad Boat Building. Welcome back to Building the Bushi Dory, and today we're gonna put on rail caps. Now, rail caps in a small boat are meant to just protect the shear line. You can imagine when these boats are stacked on the deck of a schooner, they're gonna get bashed up pretty good as you lower one boat into the other to stack them. In a traditional fishing boat that's working with nets, for instance, you can imagine you want a shear line without obstructions on there that the nets could get cut off on. That's where rail caps come into play. Let's get right down to it. All right, our shear line is all fared out. Today is the day that we're gonna work on our cap rails. So I've got my door skin patterns already made up and they're laid on here. Now, it will take some wider stock in order to make these in two pieces, but I've decided to do two pieces and join them right at the midships for a few reasons. For one, one reason is, this is the one spot right in the midships I know that I'm not gonna to need to put full pins. So having some joinery there will be just fine. Another reason is because there's so much wind in this, so there's quite a bit of twist. When I go to steam bend these in place, I'm gonna have an easier job twisting a long piece of material into place than I will doing a short piece of material. And it means I've only got two scarf joints to worry about doing, as opposed to four scarf joints if I were to scarf it anywhere else. So one thing I've done to try and figure out what I wanna do here is I've just taken a straight edge from this little batten, and I've just laid it across the top of the boat here on the inside of my pattern over there. And I've run it down here towards the midships. And what I'm basically doing is I can measure the width of the stock that I need in order to get the shape out of it. But it also allows me to sort of visualize how the grain's gonna run. And by doing this, it tells me that my scarf joints need to run towards the outside of the boat in order for the grain to follow them and have a nice strong scarf joint. What it also tells me is when I run the opposite, the other, the other one in here, if I were to use a regular long scarf joint, I'm gonna get short grain across the long toe of the scarf, and that's no good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run both of them to the middle, and I'm gonna use what we call an anchor stock in between. So if I were to use a single scarf, it would run something like this. And the piece on this side, all that grain's running along with the toe of the scarf. So that's plenty strong, that's great. But if I were to do this with only one scarf, all the grain coming from the other one is going to be creating shorter grain across here. And that's not great. So here's another boat that I'm working on right now that's also getting covering boards. And you can see how the grain is perfect along this length of the scarf, but on its opposing part, the grain runs short. Now I just elected to just let that slide on this one I really don't need it for the strength. It's a glued joint, so I'm, I'm not worried about it coming apart or anything like that. But if this were a stem or some other part that in which this strength of this joint is really important, I would not get away with this sort of short grain. Another option is to run both of these scarf joints to here, like so, do the same thing on the other side, and then use a piece of what we call anchor stock in between. So it'd be a separate piece of wood that just fall, fills in that blank. And you can see how the grain running down this side of the board would make for an optimal scarf going in the other direction again. And this is exactly how anchor stocks work. We optimize the grain on both parts and we fill in the blanks with something else that will continue that grain through there in a more structurally effective way. All right, here's what I've got to work with for material for this little project here. So this is red oak, which is absolutely not my first choice for doing this part. Ideally I'd want white oak or black locust would be good choices or mahogany perhaps. When I went down to my lumber yard there was not a lot available in wide planks and because of the amount of sweep here I need quite a bit of width to get these out. All right so I'm going to do two things. I'm just going to do a nice tight tracing of these patterns. Then we're going to use this other trick where I use a washer to create an offset that I'm going to cut to. A 
I think we're just going to start by roughing these into two pieces. Just want to give myself a line to follow here. We'll just split the line right down the middle. That's going to make things much more manageable on the bandsaw. This is a huge bummer. These have all got little rotty pockets in them. I can't use this stuff. Damn. Bummer. Gotta scrap it. All right, well, we've had a setback. So the yoke I got for these covering boards was rotten inside. I can't use it for this. And uh, it's kind of a bummer because it means it's 50 bucks that just disappeared on a, on a job that's already in the red. So my only way forward is to find an alternative and I, rather than go out and spend more money, I decided I'm going to pull some material I had sitting in the pile. Um, it's yellow cedar, which is not quite what I was planning on. However, it is it's thick enough that I can get uh, I can get the thickness of covering boards I wanted, which is what I, which I wasn't getting from the oak to start with. And um, it happens to be flat sawn, which isn't ideal, but that's not the end of the world, I think. And the stuff I have has got a real heavy sweep to it, which is going to make it a little bit difficult. Um, it's not bad in that the sweep of the shear is not a problem, but uh, when I resaw it, one side obviously is going to be sweeping one way and the other side is going to be sweeping the other. Unless what I might do is resaw each piece in order to deal with one side and then I can flip it around. I don't know. I'm, uh, for the, for the most, what I think I'm going to do right now is just I'm going to glue my, um, I'm going to put my, my pattern back together into one piece and rethink my scarf locations. That's what I'm going to do. All right, after much debating, I've decided I need to do, I'm going to do two flat scarves um, right here at this frame and right here at this frame. I don't really love having to do that. I wanted to do nice long hook scarves, but I just don't have the material on hand and the right lengths to pull that off. So this just seems like the best solution. We've switched from the oak, which didn't work out because of quality problems, to yellow cedar. The yellow cedar I have is only six inches wide, so it just barely makes this little curve right here. And then even up at the stem, I need to make, cut and fit some little pieces to finish off the sort of the full coverage at the stem. So right now I'm just going to take this piece out and uh, we're going to go cut some stock. I've already resawn it. So the trick now is to just get some parts roughed out and uh, deal with any steaming that has to happen. I might be able to get away without steam, but we'll see. I won't know until I have the finished pieces 
cut out and sort of a slightly oversized and see how they fit into place. This is a little technique I like to use to help reduce snipe. Snipe is when the cutter head on your thickness planer takes a slightly deeper bite on your board when the board is only supported by one of the feed rollers, either at the beginning or end of the cut. So after I started my first board, I'll pass the second one through and the feed rollers are supported by the first board, which means the second board does not get snipe at its end. Now as the first one comes to the end of its run, it also does not get any snipe. The second board is supporting those rollers. And the net result is I get two boards with slightly more length that I can work with when I go to make my parts. And sometimes that extra inch or two makes or breaks the piece. Okay, so here's my first piece. I need an extra inch and a half on either end for my scarf joints. These are the central pieces. And I want to make sure I have a little bit of extra material protruding past the edges to allow for fitting. So I'm going to give myself just sort of a scant quarter of an inch over here. And it gives me sort of a scant quarter of an inch on the top edge. I'm just using this little extra piece of stock here as a, um, just as a convenient way to draw my, the extra length that I need. Okay, now I need my offset. Okay, so here's my little washer for doing an offset. So it's just giving me an eighth, giving me an eighth of an inch. Three sixteenths of an inch, something like that. Okay. I'm just gonna mark this. This is my way of marking forward. Oh, I should probably there, and the mark where the scarf has to run. Oop, I almost got that backwards. Yeah, this is, this is forward. Okay. So this guy gets a, a scarf joint across here like this. Now before using the same pattern to make parts for both sides of the boat, I want to double check that it's symmetrical. There's also the chance that it's off by a little bit and we need to be able to accommodate that. Okay, this forward piece is a little tricky. I can't get this corner into it no matter what I do. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I've marked off this little triangle piece which will just build, fit, will add to it later. And um, I would love to be able to just take this little sweep all the way through but I don't even have enough room for that. So. This is the best we can do, unfortunately. It'll work out okay in the end, but I hate having to pinch things so hard. But that's what you get when you have a small boat with a lot of shape to it. So what I need to do is make sure that I mark exactly where this little detail starts and stops here. So I can put a straight edge onto it. So what I think I'm going to do actually up here is I'll probably even leave this little line long until I've until I've got everything set on the boat and then I can draw myself out a new center line that would be the best way to go.
run out of time to steam these today. But these have been sitting in the shop for quite a few years now, these pieces of wood, so they're extremely dry. And uh, while well, they would probably steam just fine, I decided since I can't steam till tomorrow anyway, I've got tonight to try and get some moisture into them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just giving them a good mop down. I'd like to get the other end of these. Just mop them down with some water, obviously. And I'm going to be just taking part of them. And the, the part that's getting the most twist, I'm just gonna wrap those in wet cloth. Like that, like that. So that's just to ensure that they're getting a little bit of extra moisture into them. And so we'll just slide these into the steam box. The, the only reason I'm putting them in here really is because it's just going to make for a, a, a damper environment for them overnight. Just to make sure it's good and wet in there. So I'm just going to pour a bunch of water into the box. Like so. Now I know it doesn't look like there's enough shape here to warrant having to steam these in place, but I tell you there's a fair bit of twist right near the tail end here. And while I could have probably gotten these in just cold, by steaming them it takes the fight out of them. And that means I need to use fewer fasteners to hold it down, but it also means I have a much lower risk of them splitting out from tension on those fasteners in the future. It really doesn't take me very long to get set up for steam, so I like to go ahead and use it whenever I feel it's warranted. Now the process of fitting these caps is fairly straightforward. My first job is just getting this joint up here fitted. I've already done that in this case. Once that's done, I install just a couple fasteners just to make sure everything is absolutely 100% located in the same spot each time I go and play with this. With it fastened in place, I can draw along the bottom of this and get my finished shape that my cap rails need to be, but I'm not going to bother cutting it right to that shape. I'm going to cut it just a little bit proud by a sixteenth of an inch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just finish the whole fitting process before I trim it down to the final width. So that part's been done. So the next thing I need to think about is fitting the next section. So this is my next section of rail. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a nice clean cut down here where it's supposed to start. I'm going to do sort of a quick and dirty layup right here with a couple clamps just to sort of make sure that I've got the angle of it correct. We'll mark the scarf out. And then we're going to cut that scarf before we do any other work here. Basically I just want to make sure that once the scarf is cut, the rest of this is all going to jive in terms of laying down in the right position here. So this is fairly straightforward. I can simply go in here and actually just mark the edges of the scarf with a pencil from underneath. And I don't need to worry about the length of it because I'm make, making all my scarves three inches long. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm just going to flip this over. Here's my two marks. I'm just going to start by cutting those on the bandsaw and I'll lay off my, the other end of my scarf while I'm at it. So three inches back from that line.
Okay, so I'm using this little router plane, drop the blade down to the depth of that lip, and then I can just use this like a marking gauge to mark that same depth onto here. Use a pencil just to darken up that line. And I'm going to just mark off where that scarf is going to land on the side of this. This is not a, this is really just a general reference line because I'm going to just use the bandsaw to get rid of the bulk of this material that I got to take off. And I wouldn't normally do that, but this particular batch of yellow cedar is very dense and uh, it's proving to just be kind of laborious to, to take it too much down by hand. I'm just going to use this block of wood just to help hold things in a perpendicular fashion. All right, now I've got this clamped down onto the bench and you always want to put some sort of blocking in behind your scarf edge. Now this isn't a feather edge scarf, which is nice. And I'm just going to use my smoothing plane to do the bulk of this work here. As you get closer to your line, you want to lighten up on your cuts. These are going to be glued scarfs as well, so this, uh, this grit actually really helps to make for a better bond. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Now we're just going to see how that fits the other end. And once that's done, might have to tweak it a little bit. And then we'll move on to the next bit. That looks pretty good. Now I didn't dress up that edge. Oh, that's going to look great. Okay, so I just need a couple strokes on this, this very edge here just to Tighten it up. Okay. So that feels good. All right, I got a nice fit on this scarf, got a clamp down. So what I'm going to do now is just put a few fasteners in to hold this in place. That's what I got to do before I can before I can even move think about moving on to the next step here. So we'll just start by popping one in down near this end. My scarf is going to land here. Just using some short construction screws, the nice loose, nice loose thread on them. I'm not going to drill all the holes right now. I'm just going to focus on just enough to hold this in place and, and locate it. And I really want to try and squeeze a fastener up closer to this scarf here. What do I do on the other side? Oh yeah, right, okay. So I'm just going to mark out where I know my, my fasteners are going to go. And I can use one of those spots. So 
I have one right here. Okay, now that that's done, I'm just going to trace underneath. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up where my scarf was going to start on this piece. So I've got some, I've got some spots that I've already laid off on the shear here where I want that scarf to land. So now I can take this off and we can mark, and cut that scarf. Okay, so just to get started here, I basically need these marks that I've created on the other side. I don't need it on this side. What I do need on this side, however, is the next mark, which is the end cut. This guy, I'm just going to carry this up and around to the top. So that's going to be the top of my hook scarf right there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to rough out the um, edges of this on the bandsaw and bring them down closer to my finished line. Trim it down to these lines and then we're going to go and cut that scarf. I want to thank all my subscribers for their ongoing support, their comments, their shares, and good wishes. And I also want to thank all of my followers on Patreon whose monthly pledges support this channel. If you can help us on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. There are links in the corner or down in the description. Okay, the first thing I need to do is just get this set up clamped in place. Need a bit of blocking because there's such a sweep in this piece of material here. This is going to be a feather edge on here now. You want to align the edge of your part with the edge of your backing block. If anything, the backing block should protrude just a hair, maybe a sixteenth at the most. Back here, I'm just going to Got a bunch of junk stacked up to act as blocking to hold this in place. There we go. This is still it was floating a little bit high there, which isn't great. Let me try raising this up a little higher. Yeah, there we go. That's got it. Doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to work. All right, now. 
my first job here is just to score along that line. So I'm going to use my square and a utility knife. So I'm just going to score this a few times here. Next, I'm just going to take a chisel. This is something we call protecting your line. So I've created a little ridge there. And now that I've created this little trough, basically, the saw will ride along that very nicely. I'm kind of eyeballing how deep I want it. Just based on some tarnishing on the side of this saw blade. Okay, now that I've got that roughed out, I can use my chisel to knock back some more material here. There we go. So that, that's going to be the height of my lip. And now I just got to waste away the rest of the material here. And because this is sort of a pain to clamp up, I'm going to just do this all by hand here. This is really dense cedar. It's a freshly sharpened chisel. And even it doesn't really like it. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna use the rabbit plane. The rabbit plane is actually a really effective tool for roughing things out sometimes. Now I've got this little haunch here. I want to make sure that I'm not going below that. You gotta be careful that you don't whack your uh, shoulder here with this part of the plane. where you want to go real slow, really careful. I'm always just a little bit thinner on that corner for some reason. Once I'm down this thin, it makes sense to switch over to abrasives. So again, we'll take our block. Okay, I can try tweaking the shoulder just a little bit with the sanding block. You want this to be undercut just a hair. That way you get a nice tight joint right at the surface and the undercut's gonna fill with adhesive. Beautiful, okay, this is ready to go back on the boat. really good. I'm just going to clamp this down a little harder. Okay, now on to fitting the last piece. We've got this scarf fitted. We'll just lay down the rest of the piece here. Making sure this location is good. We've got a little bit of margin all the way around. If there isn't, check the fit. 
Make sure that you stay fitted at the scarf. I need to give this just a little bit of what we call endo. Yeah, there we go, just to make sure it's nice and tight. And the nice thing about these hooked scarves um, is generally if you've got a mismatch here at the scarf joint, you can kerf it a little bit with a saw to try and tighten that up. This is perfectly within my range of acceptability at the moment. I don't need to get this invisible because this is going to be a glued scarf. A little glue line's not a problem. I just want to make sure it fits nicely. And um, that all looks really good. So I'm going to trace underneath all of this and I'm going to mark on my the end piece here the center line where my um, this end cut is going to come and it's going to come to the inside corner of my breast hook area and then I'm going to fit a separate little piece in here because remember I didn't have enough width in my stock to get this little extra bit out. So we're going to do that next. I've got this cap rail trimmed down, fitted in place, and now I need to fill in this little hole here between the two. So let me just show you a couple things. First of all, there's figuring out this angle and what I came up with is you can take a couple pieces of wood, cross them over like so, draw a line up there, and then basically you can divide this angle right here. And this should give you the, uh, the angle between the two. So then you can see how I've cut the other pieces and then just played around with them until I got the right angle. And then once I had that done, you know, it was an easy matter to just set up my miter gauge to match that angle, set up the, the bandsaw to cut that. And then we're cutting these little pieces here to fit. And I'll glue this right here. I'll probably, what I'll probably do is save the gluing of this until we're actually installing this whole thing and then I can just sort of slide this into place. Once this is fixed, I know it's not going anywhere. It's easier to slide this into place then and any final fitting can get done at that time. And I'll just leave this long for the moment because if I need to sneak it up or sneak it back, I've got room and then I'll, I'll as soon as I know exactly where it's got to be, I'll trim this to match the uh, angle of the inside of the breast hook. So I'm going to... Um give all of this a coat of shellac because it dries quickly. Red lead paint would be the ideal but I don't have the time to do that. Shellac will do just fine. And we're going to take all these parts off, shellac the backs of them, shellac this surface, and then once that shellac is dry we're going to bed this in place and we're going to use epoxy to glue all the scarves. All right that's it for today folks. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please join us again next time. Thank all of you for watching and thank everybody on Patreon who supports this channel. And if you can help us out there, please do. Links in the corner down in the description. All right, ciao for now, folks. We're gonna go play banjo.